So I got to tell you that over the years, my kids have given me gifts. And the ones that mean the most are not the big formal wrapped gift, but the gifts that just kind of came out of the blue. This is kind of show and tell. So um, you probably can't see it, especially back in the cheap seats, but this, this is a little bit of wood that my son uh, painted brown. And he, was, he did this at a friend's house. He was spending the day with one of his buddies. And his buddy's dad used to do uh, uh, wood burn carvings, you know. And so my son Rob got to have a go. So he got this little bit of wood, painted it brown, and then burned it into the wood, D-U-N-D-E-E, -E, Dundee, which is my hometown in Scotland. And he brought it home to me. And just the thought that while he was off having fun with a buddy, he got to do something creative and thought of me and brought this home. Now, that's more years ago than I care to admit. And this has been by my bedside in every house that we've had since. And I brought it here this morning from my bedside table. Now, my daughter, Grace, Rob's twin, made one of these ones. Just a little holder for sticky notes. It says, world's best dad. I know some of you have, might have stuff that says, world's best dad. <laughs> they were just trying to make you feel good. I'm the world's best dad, and I can prove it. Okay? And so, not satisfied with just doing this, my daughter would occasionally write little notes. There's dozens of them over the years, but I just brought a couple for the show and tell. I love you, Dad. 12, 16, 07. And then this one, nice service, March 13th, 2009. See, Kevin, that was the last time I had a nice service. <laughs> March 13th, 2009. Again, not rap, just given, but given with such love that it resonates in my heart still. So, so this sits in my office, every office I've had since, and this on my bedside table, every bedside table I've had since. Some gifts, I smile politely and they're still hanging in my closet. Some of them waiting until the day comes when I fit them again. But, but some of them just politely hanging in the closet until they go to goodwill. Other gifts, I, I just can't even remember a thing about them. They, they came into my life, they went out of my life. You know, Tel Aviv. We intellectualize the faith so much. Um, you know, we make everything about believing so profoundly complex. It, it drives us to despair sometimes. I mean, metaphorical and literal despair sometimes. We get ourselves twisted into knots so that we end up saying, well, I know I'm meant to believe all this stuff, and, and I believe most of it, and I have trouble with this and this and this, and we beat ourselves up over it. Or, or I, I understand this, but I don't understand that. I must be a terrible Christian if I don't understand this. No, you're not. You are in splendid company. Sometimes we say to ourselves, oh, I should know the Bible better. Actually, you should. I mean, take it down off the shelf, crack it open. Go to a Bible study. Believe me, when we moved house a few months ago, we bought a big fancy television. It came with an instruction manual this thick. And once I'd read it, I had to go online and I had to enter a chat group to try and figure out all the bits I could figure out. It took me weeks, but it was important to me that I, I, I was able to create the TV. So, yeah, we beat ourselves up saying, oh, I should know the Bible better. Yes, we should. Try it. Come on in. The water's lovely. But it's not the end of the world. We'll find our, a way to beat ourselves up over the faith, come what may. But it's a lot simpler than we make it out to be. In Jesus' incarnation, the, the phrase we in the trade use to describe his birth in the manger in Bethlehem. In Jesus' incarnation, in Jesus' life and teaching, in the way that he poured out himself in love with mercy and forgiveness and loving kindness, his death on the cross and his resurrection from the grave. It's all relationship. It's not academia. 
It's not intelligence. It's not wit or philosophy or myth. It's relationship. All of us bound to him. In what the bidding prayer on Monday Thursday calls the great fellowship of love. In the empty grave, we have been offered life, and it comes to us as a gift, free gratis and for nothing, price already paid. The question comes, are we going to accept the gift? Are we going to leave it just hanging in the metaphorical closet? Are we going to forget about it by and by because we're blessed with so many other gifts and blessings in life? Are we going to pretend, oh, that's wonderful, and then just leave it in the corner of the drawer? Or, and there's nothing intellectual about this, I say again unto thee, this is relational. Or are we going to take that gift of life, and is it going to mean the world to us? Is it going to go with us everywhere we go? Is it going to warm our hearts on dark days? Is the memory of that gift going to lighten up the world when the world is otherwise dark? Is the memory of that gift and its resonance in our hearts and in our lives, is it going to get us through the trials and tribulations of life? And is it going to shine joy into our lives when otherwise there is only grief and pain? The gift has been offered. What are we going to do with it? I pray, I pray, I pray that you will accept that gift, that incredible, powerful, awesome relationship gift, and that from this glorious resurrection day onwards, you will find yourselves in that great fellowship of love. Amen.